Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the 19th of June. Uh, we've identified a new pest. We came back from a long hike yesterday and just sat over here in the garden at home to uh, chill out. And I looked over on my espalier apple tree and uh, got woolly aphid. So if you've never seen that before, bear with me and I'm going to show you it now. So here's the espalier apple tree. See the rose borders coming out. Pretty nice now. Anyway, let's go in for a closer look. So if you pay attention to this branch here, you can see these kind of white, woolly looking deposits. Seeing a wee bit. And then it's actually coming up on this branch here. It's uh, there's some more just under there. It's dotted all over this branch and then if, I don't know if you can make this out, but if you look down onto the lower branch you'll see, so there's deposits here on this leaf and I can see bits all over here that's woolly aphid so if I um, come back up and just take some of that off I'll take it in for a closer look. So I'm actually going to use this to see if I can get a better... I don't know if you can... It's actually just full of aphids in there and they kind of surround themselves with this waxy, looks like wool. And they can cause... I don't know if that's focusing any better or not really. Anyway, but they can cause... Um, the tree to be more susceptible to cankers and of course you know spread disease and everything like that so they can also attract uh, sooty mould with the uh, secretions so we need to get rid of them basically so there's several ways in which uh, I'm going to do that okay so the first way is just simply to I've got a pair of secateurs here felcos and rates and this branch this little growth here I'm just simply going to remove that. It's not bearing any fruit. You can see how badly that's. So I'm just going to pop that in the incinerator and we'll burn it. The second way, second method is I've got some methylated spirits and an old jar which I've uh, cleaned out. So I'll just pop some meths in there and I've got an old toothbrush and we're just going to scrub the areas affected on the bigger branches with, with this. So let's get some on the brush. And just brush it on. Working into the crannies and everything as much as you can. And just continue till we've covered the, as much of the infected parts as possible. And the third method is to use a mix of soapy water and neem oil. And using the flick sprayer, we're going to spray that all over the foliage that's been affected. It's the beauty about these sprayers, you can adjust these so we can come up underneath. Along here you can see signs of the other aphids like green fly quite extensive along that branch there and actually along this bottom branch so basically I'm just going to do the whole tree
So I will do an update and uh, we'll see how successful that treatment was. So now it's uh, time to go down to the micro orchard. There's some more problems I need to deal with there that I want to share with you. Well, here we are down on the micro orchard now. I did a video previously on the um, pear midge, one of the problems I've had with the pear trees here, and I'll put a link up to that for you if you haven't seen that video. So what I'm going to do now is just walk you around and show you some of the thoughts that I've been having about how to maybe try and implement a solution. These are the two pear trees that I have. They came originally as uh, Dionicomis. I've also grafted some uh, Concord, the variety Concord, onto it. And that's really interesting. So what we have here, this one is the Diondercomis. And it, you see that it's uh, it's got scab on. In fact, I think just the majority of the fruit are affected. I'm just trying to find a better example. Here, for example, okay, we've got this. And if you, you know, they're just dropping off. So I think... Most of the fruit from this commis, come this branch here, you know, I think they'll be very lucky to see they're just dropping off. I also had uh, it was badly affected with the leaf blister mite, and on this branch here, see where all I pulled all the leaves off, and it has actually sent out some new leaves but whether they'll get reinfected I'm not sure it's gone through onto the other tree I'll just show you that so the leaf blister might started off over there and it's just worked its way through into this second tree and the whole tree I don't know if you can make that out there's these black dead leaves all over the floor here but the whole tree has been affected again by this leaf blister mite so at this point you now again there's nothing I can do about that but let's go back to look at the Concord this branch here is a graft of the variety Concord there was the grafting point because you can see that below that there's another Diendocomis that one looks as though it wants to actually to stay on but if you follow this um, branch up you can see it's got a lot of fruit on and they're clean they're not affected by that scab at all none of the fruits look as though they're going to drop off by the natural June drop and they may, you know so that would be an example perhaps of the, the natural June drop but if you look at that branch that is going to be a good set of fruit I mean it's still even throwing some blossom out which I'm just going to remove that because it's too late now for that to make up there's another little bit there just take that off and then if we look at the foliage again there's, there's a little I don't know what that is but it's not leaf blister mite this foliage is clean and healthy so I'm thinking that one of the solutions is, and I've said this before, but now I'm getting more and more convinced that the solution to this problem is really just to remove the bulk of the tree and uh, re-graft it with um, the Concord, because it does seem resistant to the pear midge and also to the leaf blister mite, or at least if it's not fully resistant, it's very resistant. I mean, that might be a little bit of an example there, perhaps looks like leaf blister mite but it's you know it's very very clean I mean there's another that looks like a bit there on that leaf there but you see where I'm coming from with me thinking here I hope so a couple of years ago I did a bud graft of Concord on this branch here so this is the variety Concord so I think what I'm going to do is cut this branch off. So this branch here is dying the commis. And then hopefully the tree will redirect some of the energy and make this uh, bud graft grow out strongly. Then we've got some cyan wood, which we can come back later on if it grows strong enough 
in this year you know we can maybe get some sign wood to regraft the whole tree so I'm just going to remove that branch about maybe an inch inch and a half above that bud graft like so and then we'll need to come back and see if we can get enough cyan wood this year if not then hopefully next year or maybe somebody from the local orchard group might be able to supply me with some but then it's going to be a drastic we're going to come back into the realms of bark or rind grafting so removing these big limbs right out and then doing some grafts of uh, concord variety and hopefully that will resolve this problem while we're looking at the pear trees uh, my friend Helen over in Norway we did a sort of cyan wood swap I sent her some signs of quince and she in return sent me some signs of a pear I think the variety was Selena I did five grafts and there's just one but it has this one's just taken you can see the, some green leaves coming out there from uh, there's about three buds and this is the again this is the conference dined sorry dined a commis so I'm just gonna keep pinching that back I want this scion to get energy to you know obviously make new growth now whether or not that variety is resistant to um, leaf blister mite in the pear midge well time will tell